Hi. Come on in, this is Gary Moore. And tonight our show is going to be partly live and partly on some pretty wild film, if this is any indication. If I can get myself untangled from this mess, the panel and I are going to be looking back at some of the zanier moments from past shows as we celebrate the, believe it or not, ninth anniversary of I've Got a Secret. Got a secret brought to you tonight by Miss Farrell. Hair color is so natural, only your hairdresser knows for sure. And by Bristol Myers, makers of Bufflin, the modern drug for relief from headache pain. Now, here is America's number one panel show, I've Got a Secret, with Bill Cullen, Betsy Palmer, Bess Myerson, Henry Morgan, and here he is, Gary Moore. Hello, friends. Thank you. Hi, Bill. Hello, Bess. Hello, Betsy. Hello, Henry. Hello, hello. Isn't this the way to do a show, though? Happy anniversary. No, it's a happy anniversary to us all. Who would have ever thought it was going to happen? <laughs> uh, you, my friends out there, have no doubt noticed that we're not using our usual scenery tonight because our producers decided that after all of these years of knocking ourselves out every week, uh, we could afford to take a breather and look back at some of the highlights from some of our past shows. Now, most of the film that we're about to look at will be scenes that the panel themselves have asked to see again. Things that happened on the air that the panel remembered as being especially amusing or unusual. Uh, but before we look at the film, uh, panel, may I ask you, each of you must have, or perhaps you don't, but perhaps you do, have something in your mind that happened either on the show or off the air as a result of a show that, you have, that we just finished doing. Uh, Henry, does anything pop to your mind, uh, any outstanding occurrence either on the show or off the air? Well, naturally, the trip to Africa, which was uh, quite a thing. That was before Jets, you know. Uh, yes, that's when we uh, told Henry he was going to Africa, and he didn't know this, but he left within an hour or two. Yeah, and, and uh, unfortunately, uh, Gary, I suppose you'd find out one way or another, but since then, I really haven't been paying much attention. <laughs> find it amusing. I don't uh, say it's escaped me, but... Uh, <laughs> well, let's go, let's go right around, Betsy. Well, let's see. I, I remember uh, one time when um, I was to go away to California. Yes. And you were to find someone to fill my shoes. Yes. And the night came that you picked the lady out to fill my shoes and everything was all set to go. And I said to you, I don't have to go to California, and you didn't know. We surprised you that night, I remember. <laughs> That's right. We had the whole spot predicated on the fact she was going to go to California to make a picture, it was, and you didn't yes, go. and I didn't at that time. Yeah, you're a fink. I was, but you were awful cute the way you reacted. <laughs> Beth, what is your treasured memory, if that's the word, or your most outstanding memory? Well, I don't know if that's the word, Gary. I bet you remember it as well as I do when uh, Jane Meadows came on the show, and she wanted me to go through all the tricks that you had put her through. And uh, they brought this beautiful cow out, and I was just about ready to milk it, and it kind of embarrassed us, and, it, and on it went. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and, and on it went, and on, and yeah. Oh, boy. Bill, we'll check with you later, because I think right now we ought to start getting to some of the things we've been talking about here. I didn't have to rack my brain when I was asked what I would like most to see again. Uh, without a doubt, it was the man who blew up the inner tube with his mouth. Now, that was Jack Mosley, and his secret was that he could blow up an inner tube with his mouth until the tube burst from his sheer lung power. Up until the night of our show, I had, uh, it had never taken him more than four or five minutes to accomplish this up until the night of our show. And we started out having a race with uh, him blowing the inner tube with his mouth and me using a bicycle pump. So let's take a look at the uh, innocent beginning of one of the wildest spots I've ever had on television. All right, Frank, let's see the film, please. How do you feel, Gary? Well, wait a minute. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Now, from here on in, you can see, you see, in every inner tube, there is one place that is weaker than another. It stands to reason, right? We can see where this one's going to blow. I have been instructed to get out of firing distance. And it's all right with me, because I'm pooped anyhow. <laughs> so I'll go back here. <laughs> Jack, you continue. Panel, it might be a good idea for you all to move back a little bit. I said, where do you want to stand? He said, I want to stand out where I'm not near anybody. And I said, why not? He said, because I don't know where I'm going to land. 
And I said, what do you mean, know where you're going to land? He said, well, it knocks me down. <laughs> you remember that, don't you? I thought he was going to burn some blood vessels. Yes, we were so worried for him. And, you know, I gave him every opportunity to stop, but he felt he would be disgraced if he didn't accomplish this, so he, he pressed on. Now, actually, we could have shown you much more of Jack blowing up that tube. To be specific, we could have shown you almost 20 minutes more of what you just saw. Because from that point on, nothing else happened on the show for the whole half hour. Right up until about a minute before we went off the air, it was just Jack blowing and working on that inner tube. And, and, and in order not to waste all of that footage, we edited some, uh, some of it uh, into the films that will be coming up later in the show. You'll see them some more later. Now, uh, Betsy, in requisitioning the uh, film that you wanted to see most, uh, you concentrated on a particular area of uh, our show, didn't you? Well, actually, um, it, it was um, a thing so nice about this show is that it kind of prepares us for hereafter. I mean, if, <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I've got a secret that just doesn't happen to go on anymore, you've been very educational. And um, besides beating drums, there was the one that uh, you sh that we did where we learned how to shave people or oh, kind of cut mom. beards. Ah, uh, yes, uh, we, we, have, we have that film. But I wouldn't count on any letters of recommendation from the men whose beards you trim. <laughs> Fortunately, they were quite willing to have their beards uh, shaved off. But I, I don't think they were counting on the results that we're about to see. Uh, Eloise, you want to run the beard trimming film, please? <laughs> as we go along. This is what uh, Betsy was able to accomplish. And here we see what Henry was able to accomplish. <laughs> Not too bad. Not too bad. Oh, hey, excellent. Marvelous job. Yeah. I don't quite know what to accomplish. <laughs> Bill, I've been looking at a still shot of this picture, and I must say, even at this late date, I still do not know what to accomplish for this <laughs> Yes, he's going to say, he looks like he's been attacked by moths. Well, Gary, you're right, and I checked, I was worried about it and checked into it, and I found out, like, not until six weeks later, this guy was D.C. He was what? <laughs> he had an A.C. razor, and, you know, the man was D.C. <laughs> not worth it, Gary. No, well, the situation <laughs> isn't, isn't too hopeless, Bill even if you never did, do get any work as a barber. Uh, our next piece of film that Betsy requested uh, might bring you some other offers. If you don't mind working in the window of a restaurant, this is the night that you tried your hand at tossing pizza pies. You remember that? Wow. All right. Uh, Mrs. R, will you roll the film, please? <laughs> in your pizza and I almost ended up with a hole in the head, if you'll recall. Do you, do you remember anybody how that spot ended up? Henry and Betsy were throwing pizzas at each other. That's right. Bob and uh, not only our, each other, but Bob Anderson, our teleprompter operator who sits out in the audience uh, most of the time, was uh, is very fond of Italian food. So we ended up by throwing the pizza at him. Oh, yeah. And of course, red-blooded boy, he threw it right back at us. That's right. Sure. Now, Betsy, we have strung together at this particular moment some film clips of some of the other remarkable things that we've all learned to do on this show. Uh, okay, Lafayette, may you roll the film, please? All right, now just uh, put your feet about a foot apart. Right. Now jump up and down real easy. Fine. <laughs> I get sick, you know. Right now. Right. Nice and easy. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is the uh, uh, 
take your blindfold off. Well, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, he told me, he said, I don't know whether I'm going to land on the right side of the stage, I don't know whether I'm going to land on my face or on my back. Sometimes it doesn't knock him down at all, but, uh, and we hope it won't tonight. Good, she's been before. Further towards center, Bill, so you don't hit the desk. There you don't go. worry about my hitting the desk. You gonna demonstrate again, or do I just have to do it? Hey, can you imagine making a living like this week after week? <laughs> Bill, are you any better at this hula hoop stuff now than you were then? Well, I don't like to brag, but I can say I can do it every bit as well now as I... <laughs> I just happen to have one here. Let's see if you... Let's see if you... Take one step to the left there and... Uh, get it to the here. Oh, uh, my wife learned Take to off do, your jacket. My wife, huh? Take off your my jacket. My wife learned to do this for obvious reasons. <laughs> hey, but much better, much better, much better. <laughs> and you're right. It is a heck of a way to learn a, a living week after week after week. But, one thing that we want to pause to tell you about on this, our ninth anniversary, is one of our good clients. You'll find this hard to believe, I'm sure, but way back in the Middle Ages, some people used to use a pair of bellows like this as a headache remedy. What's the matter with, what's the matter? My, my belt popped. <laughs> Your belt was undone all that time? Oh, it's up. Well, that might have been almost better than the cop. 